And uh, what we have here is the Bay Trail tablet with 2 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of memory. And this is an artificial unboxing since I got this a few days ago, but I don't think anyone will mind. So here we have the regular outside box that I came mailed in. And inside we have this molded uh, cast wood, uh, paper container. It actually looks quite nice and feels quite nice as well. And it's completely recyclable. And uh, so slide off this band, retaining band, and the lid just lifts right off. And here we have the tablet. And here you can even see they have a little inset of bamboo. So kudos to whoever Adele came up with this. It looks really nice. Makes you feel like you got what you paid for. And the tablet itself. So I'll lift it out. And on the back, it'll show you how to lift off the back panel by pressing at certain points on the uh, lid. And also we have Microsoft Office and the key for uh, Touch Edition, Microsoft Office 2013. We have the user manual, which will never again see the light of day. We have a USB cord about three feet in length, and it's pretty hefty. It feels like it could carry about two amps of current. And finally, we have the dog head, what they call it, power adapter, 24 watts, I believe. And uh, has a USB on the top, and on the bottom, you can actually pull it apart. And here you can see it's actually grounded. So presumably in other countries, what they do is they'll actually just replace this little part at the end. And when it's plugged in, there's just a little white LED light at the top. And here you can see the bottom of the case. So let me begin by, as I said, this is something I've opened previously, so I just turned it on. And, and this actually works out better if you just slide it off sideways. So now I'm going to go over what the ports are on this. If you look at the bottom, you see we have two slots for the support for the keyboard, some pogo pins, and a dock connector. But what's interesting is these sides are actually magnetic. So I'm not sure anyone still uses floppies, but if you do, it's something to keep in mind. And around the side, we have a mini HDMI port, the SD card slot, and some odd hole. It's about the size of the paper clip, but it's blind and it doesn't go anywhere, so I have no idea what that is. We have one speaker here. On the top, we have the power button, a small white light that comes on two holes of unknown purpose, probably microphones. Going around, we have the audio jack, a volume up and down switch, a, another speaker, and the charging port, which is actually a, mi a micro USB, which is, again, very good, and a super speed USB 3.0 port. And I will say, I've tested this port and tried to plug in a small dongle I have but unfortunately, it does not actually conduct any data. So, sorry to shoot down any hopes there. So while I'm at it, I'll demonstrate how you eject the SD card on this model. You take a pin, you stick it in the hole, you press, and it actually ejects with some force. And you just can kind of get a little loose. And you can get your finger behind it and pull. And out comes the SD card. And here I have a SanDisk 64 gigabyte Ultra model loaded. You can see it's almost like a SIM card in a phone. You pop it in, it latches into the little notch right there. And then you can slot the carrier into the slot. And, uh, I'll demonstrate the display quality once I can calibrate the video camera just a moment. And uh, everyone's probably keen on seeing how exactly the back comes off, so I'll demonstrate that now. There's a small notch here that you can kind of fit your thumb under. And 
very gingerly lift up. And this is only the second time I've done this, so I'm going to be very careful. It's held in with small latches around the side. So this isn't exactly something you want to do every day. This is too nice of a device to be doing that. So, your fingernail under, lift up, gently pull, and here we go. The back cover can be removed. It's held in with some clips. So here you can see it's a 32 watt hour battery that side up. There's two latches holding it in place and a standard ZIF connector. And here you can see the NFC antenna and uh, presumably that's some internals like the uh, mini PCIe slot somebody found. And here you can see the 8 megapixel camera. So, and to put the back on, you first line up the tabs at the top it slides in vertically and you can push down at those points that they referenced in the plastic to pop the back back on. So I'd say there's about 12 of them scattered throughout the body of the tablet. So there we go and the back's back on. and. Uh, it has a nice texture to it. I guess the best thing I could say is like a rubberized pen almost. Smooth but not grippy. And uh, not too much of a fingerprint magnet. It's tolerable. The front on the other hand is almost like an iPad glass. You're going to get fingerprints all over this thing. But thanks to the high quality display, you're not going to see them very much. And in a moment I'll bring out some other tablets to compare it to. So here I have the Venue 11 Pro along with the Venue 8 Pro, an Iconia W3, and an iPad Retina Mini. And uh, I'll try to compare them in the appropriate categories. So between the Dell Venue 11, which is a 16 by 9 screen format, we have the Dell Venue 8. And uh, the screens are approximately the same quality, they have the same nice feel to them. There's a capacitive button on the 11, which is actually extremely sensitive and you'll bump it a lot by accident. Whereas the Venue 8 has a button on the side that you can press. Actually, that's the power button. And like you just noticed, it's kind of easy to get these two confused. This is the Windows button, that's the power button. And uh, in terms of screen brightness, viewing angles, and clarity, they're both fairly good uh, in comparison to something I'll demonstrate later. So, and then here you have the Venue 11 Pro, and uh, as you can see, it's just a much, much bigger screen. And you can even feel that in the heft of the device. The Venue 8 Pro feels almost like a magazine, you cheap magazine you'd pick up somewhere at a stall somewhere. This feels like you could whack somebody with it and do some damage. It's uh, still pretty light for what it is, but I'd say it's about the heft of an iPad 1. And, uh... I'd compare it to, let's say, the Iconia W3, which the viewing angles on the screen are pretty abysmal. Uh, it can cause eye strain if you use it for too long. But uh, another thing you'll notice is how thin and light the Venue 8 is compared to the Iconia W3. I mean, this feels like a brick, like you throw it through somebody's window and hit them. This feels pretty light. I'd say comparing the Venue 8 Pro and the iPad Mini Retina, they're almost about the same weight. But uh, this, the iPad, definitely does feel a lot slimmer due to the textured backing on the 8. But while I, I have large hands, so I can one hand the iPad mini, but I know people who can't. And uh, the Venue 8 Pro is just probably a lot more convenient to hold. Your thumb can actually reach almost all the way across. Whereas on the iPad, it's pretty much you're playing Game Boy style. And comparing the viewing angles on the... Venue 8 Pro and the iPad, I'd say it's about a tie. The iPad tends to be, iPad Retina Mini is brighter at steeper angles, but at those angles, I'm not sure you'd be looking at it. Uh, and between the iPad and the Venue 11 Pro, I'd say just 
due to the massive screen size you have here. It's just, there's no comparison. It's, it's a lot easier to work on this. And uh, just to demonstrate the screen size, here I've just brought up some utilities. I've set display scaling to 125%. to come stock from the factory at 150. It's just a lot easier to use it like this when you're accessing files. And uh, touchscreen sensitivity is okay. I have nothing, no complaints. Uh, it does support an SD card. So here you can see uh, uh, the partitioning layouts. It's got a 500 megabyte EFI, 40 megabyte OEM, a 2 gigabyte recovery, a 50 gig uh, Windows drive, and another 5 gig recovery after. So it's only about 30 gigs or so free when you get it. And uh, you can see my SD card. I've done some shenanigans to get a multiple partitions. I actually have a bootable SD card with an EFI partition. And uh, if there's interest, I'll teach you guys how to do that. But uh, it does support an SD card, and you can potentially offload some apps onto it if you know what you're doing. And just to demonstrate hardware specs, this is the Atom Z3770, 2 gigs RAM, 32 bit windows but it's a 64-bit processor. It even says that right here. And uh, that's just the base specs of this device. I was actually surprised this didn't ship with 64-bit windows given the processor. So, And let's just demonstrate. Yep, so you can see it's just a lot more real estate to work with. And the Venue 8 Pro, you can see it's also quite easy to use, a lot more convenient, but uh, typing on it can be a little bit difficult at times. But due to its weight, it actually works out. The Iconia, having used this for extended period of time, this actually works. It's very functional. And uh, unlike the Dell, which Dell Venue 8, which charges through the same port that is for data, the Iconia W3 actually has a separate USB port and a separate charging port. And the hardware Windows button is actually far superior. I find myself using this quite a lot. And... Uh, if we actually look at the Dell Venue 8's memory card slot, it's actually buried behind one of these rippable flaps. And this just really rubs me the wrong way. I feel like this is going to fall off. It eventually will, probably. But uh, as I said, uh, the Dell, if you... I pointed out that this uses a... Uh, here we go. has a micro USB next to a full speed. If you actually plug in, like this is a wireless keyboard dongle, if I plug this in, it actually will not activate. So unfortunately, no, they didn't. This can't do data and charge. However, on the Venue 8 Pro, it can do data and charge. So as I plug this in, yep, you can see here it's detected. So it, it would have been nice if they added that to this, where even that small port could have been used. But honestly, with the full-size port, What's the point? You just take your full adapter, stick it in, and off you go. And uh, just to compare the relative thicknesses of the devices, you can see the uh, Iconia W3 is actually fairly thick. It's almost, it feels almost double the thickness of the Venue 8 Pro. The iPad. Air, uh, iPad Mini Retina obviously takes the cake. It is the slimmest of all three of the devices, and it's extremely light, too, just due to the fact it's not textured. And uh, between the Venue 8 and the other devices, actually, it's almost as thick as the Iconia, now that I look at it, but uh, it doesn't feel that way when you're actually holding it, just due to how smooth it is on the back. The Iconia has a er, bulge that you really feel. So... Between all these tablets after using them for a while, obviously, I think this is a toy, not really relevant. Uh, between these two, honestly, these are an excellent value for what they are. A lot of people bash the screen, but honestly, you can live with it. It's not that bad. It's bad, but not terrible. And uh, the other issue is the processing speed. I haven't done any intensive apps, mainly VPN, software configuration, things like that. So this works for me. I could throw this in a bag and not have to worry about it. It feels durable. The only issue is if you're flexing the screen, you can see there's distortions popping up. It doesn't inspire confidence. The Dell, it's rigid. None of that. It's extremely well built. Same with the Venue 11 Pro. 
There's a little creaking to the removable back, but very acceptable given what it means. And again, the iPad is a toy. No replaceable battery and the SIM card slot's built in, so you can't really... You can change the SIM, but you're dependent on carriers.